Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another edition of Fun With Our Tools. <laughs> I don't know what else to call this series, so I'm just gonna keep that one, Fun With Tools, because that's what I'm having. So what I've learned so far this year about having tool usage as my main goal for the year is that I am really learning to use my tools, even on layouts when I'm not specifically designing to use a high number of tools, I still am pulling in lots of tools. So I realizing that getting three or four punches on one page isn't as hard as I probably thought it was before. So that's what I want to continue with today is I want to create a layout that is really, for lack of a better term, tool heavy. So I'm gonna bring in different tools like border making cartridges, border punches, standalone punches, maybe my custom cutting system. So that's my goal for today. And I am also going to dip into the Welcome Baby Blue. This is part of the Welcome Baby collection and I'm going to create a two page base page today. I'm not going to have any photos on this page today because I am making this for somebody else. So that'll be kind of fun, but I will put mats down wherever I will be having photos. Okay. So I'm going to be creating a background page first. And for that, I'll be using these four different sheets of paper. I'm going to create a frame style foundation and it will have a band across the center. So the background frame will be this gingham and then the center strip will be this beautiful cloud paper. And then I just brought in a bunch of different solid card stocks. You can see this is going to be basically a blue and white layout. So I'm going to create the base page and I will be right back and we can talk more about it. I wanna show you my layout before um, I go any further and before I adhere everything down completely. So this is what I meant by a frame style foundation with a band running across the middle. So to create the frame around, you have a couple different options. You can either gut or you could miter. I went ahead and mitered mine. You can see a little bit of the seam, but I, I'm okay with that because it saved my paper. If I, I couldn't gut this particular one because the cloud paper is the reverse side is the gingham. I only had two sheets of it and I wanted a seven inch strip across here. So I had to make my two seven inch by 12 inch cuts first. And then I took my scrap and I cut out one inch strips and then I mitered them. I went ahead and I'm mounting it onto some white cardstock. It's actually just an insert paper just because I found that that's easier. Okay, so I have my, my frame and then I'm going to take my band and I'm gonna place it to keep about a one and a half inch gap right here. So I'm gonna come down here to the 10 and a half and lay it just like that across on both sides. So you can keep your colored cardstock behind here. I think that that would look beautiful if even if, whether it's just white or if you had a color back here. What I decided to do is I took this dot paper that came in this pack. It has the ombre paper on the back and I cut that into an 11 inch strip by two inches. I gave myself a little bit extra slack there so that I could tuck it under here. And I'm just going to take this and put it right up in that corner. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here at the bottom. Then I just did the exact same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to bring in one last strip of paper. And for that, I took this stripe paper. It's the one with the blue rainbow on the back and I cut two inch piece by 12 inches and I'm just gonna lay that right over here, probably for now at the two inch mark and it will run vertically across my page like that. Again, lots of options, you can keep that off. You can add a piece of colored cardstock. I just wanted that little bit of different pattern to run across there. One other thing I wanted to mention about the frame is we're only framing it on three sides. So when you cut, you only need to cut six one inch by 12 inch strips to miter. But don't do like I did, because I accidentally cut four and now I just have some loose strips. Okay, so let me show you how I would put photos on this layout. Since I'm going to be giving this away as a gift, I want to make sure that they could use regular size photos without having to do little or no 
cropping to them. So I'm going to put two four by six photos vertically right over here on the left hand side. And even with that, there's a lot of options because I would probably have it scoot over and overlap that strip of paper just a tad, but you can also then put them in here like that and overlap them, kind of give it a cute whimsical look. Then on this side, you can do the exact same thing. You could bring in some verticals or you could bring in some horizontal like that. It's very cute. And then you can also always put one last photo right there. That gives five big photos without very little, with very little trimming involved. So I'm gonna slide this up just a little because I get ready to bring in some of my tools. First thing I wanna do is I want to bring in some kind of border for down here. It'll run across both sides of the page. And there's so many options. We can use our trimmer blades. We could use a border making cartridge, a border punch. We could even use, made this a little bit bigger and punched it right out onto the pattern paper. I'm gonna bring in a border making cartridge I haven't used in a while, and that is the Zebra Stripe. It's a very fun and playful cartridge. And I'm going to punch out two strips on this baby blue cardstock. So this border is what I like to call an inset because it stays in the paper when you punch it. I do want to cut that out, so I'm gonna bring in my trimmer. Now this little strip right here at the top, I would say that's about an eighth of an inch and that's gonna be perfect for what I want right here. I want it to be loose, like fringe, so I'm gonna cut off right at the base of the stripes, and that's gonna be about an inch, it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna come back through with my scissors and get that last bit out of there. Let me go ahead and do the other side. There we go, that one was much better. <laughs> okay, so I want to bring this right under here and I might be taking off this little corner. I think I might just want it over here. Same thing on the other side. I'll just run it to the end of where my frame begins. Now, I really like how that looks, and but I am going to bring in some little bit of washi tape. This one has some silver stars on it, and I think it's gonna look great right here to cover up that transition between those the border punch and the paper. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So it's just a little minor detail that you can totally skip if you want. One easy way to bring texture and movement to our page is to bring in a border punch or border making cartridge and just cut punch out half of it or use a small portion of it or have it coming out from your embellishment cluster. For example, I'm going to bring in the Chevron Arrows border making cartridge because another way to show movement is by arrows or chevrons leading the eye in the direction that you want it to go. So if you want it to go this way or that way, bringing in arrows or chevrons is a great way to do that. So I'm going to punch out one row of this, but I'm probably only going to use half of it. And for that, I'm gonna bring in my blue cardstock Okay, one row. The little fallout is super cute and very usable on our layouts as well if you wanted to show direction. Just line up a few of those and it guides the eye right to where you want it to go. So I'll probably hold on to a few of those. This is also a inset punch and so I need to trim this off as well. I'm going to reduce the size that it left behind this time. Let's see where we want to put this. This is how I sneak on tools, just putting pieces of them. So if I go on this side of the layout, I want my arrows facing inward. So let's go ahead and trim that up a little bit. There we go. So it will look something like that and you'll see it's pointing right to the photo. 
and we could even layer it over the top of the blue. So let's go ahead and trim that off. So it's actually the next day. <laughs> we had a little power outage yesterday, so I had to stop filming and pick up again today. This is where we left off. Pun we punched out this strip of chevrons and we were deciding, I think what you missed was I was trying to put it on this side because I thought we have much more room over here because our photos don't go up that high that maybe we could put it over here, kind of guiding our eye to go that direction. And then also while I was away, I decided to trim down the border down here a little bit. I felt like it was taking up too much room down at the bottom. So I just kind of gave it a little bit of a haircut on both sides. But while I was doing that, I accidentally made this mark here on my paper, which looks a lot worse in the camera than it does on my actual paper. So I will have to do some uh, creative embellishment, <laughs> embellishing right there to cover that up if it bothers me once we get finished. So I am ready to jump on in to embellishing, but before I do that, I have decided on something about the photos. I feel like these photos are just way too big. And so I'm going to um, bring in some smaller photos. I feel like it's, these are kind of, I like my photos to be the highlight. And I want this to be super easy for the person using it, but I would rather give them a nicer page and bring in smaller photos and teach them how to crop down their photos if they need to. So I'm gonna take off all the four by six photos and I'm gonna bring in, like I said, some smaller ones. So I'm gonna do a four by five on this side and on this side I'll do a three and a half by five, but I think I could even get away with five and a half, but we'll see. Now over here where this one was, I do want to add a journaling spot, so I thought I better do that now and get that in here. So I'm bringing in just a random journaling card from my stash. It's just a matte card that I cut down and it'll go over here somewhere. So, and I'm gonna leave some room over here to do a nice embellishment cluster. And for my title, I'm going to put it up here in this area, be completely different than my normal, my normal area, which is normally right over here. And another thing I thought about for this layout is um, at this point, I wanna bring in some more color. So it's a really hard choice to decide what colors. I went to the index sheet and decided what they had because I thought they had some interesting color choices here. Of course they have the blue. Then here they added canary, island waters, which is like a turquoise, and then dark sea green, which is a dark turquoise. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go with their recommendations and bring in some of these colors and see if we like it. I mean, what's the worst that's gonna happen? I won't, I won't use it, right? <laughs> For my title, I'd like to bring in this blue laser cut embellishment and it says the word amazing and I would like it right up here in the corner. But I do like to bring things in to kind of house that and kind of lift it up so it'll be a little bit more noticeable. So I'm gonna slide this up and I'm gonna bring in my custom cutting template. This is the medium size circle. And if you ever want to know like where to start with your embellishment base or you don't have any idea, I always tend to lean toward my circle. Circle is a great option, brings in a lot of interest and it's super simple, especially with our cutting system. So I'm gonna cut out the inside of this template with the red blade to get my circle. And what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna stack these up so we can work on just this one area and still have room for my tools and things. So here's the circle and my idea is just to house, put this right over here. I'm not 100% sure on where I want it so we're just gonna leave it loose right now. And then you see the word amazing just kind of pops right on out of there and I'll probably have it hanging off the side a little bit. But another thing I wanna do with it, I've been using my pens a lot more recently, maybe because I bought that new bundle of pens. This is not one of them, but this is my blue one and I, it's, a dot, it's a dot pen, so it makes little dots. And what I wanna do is put little dots all the way around this circle just to give it a little bit more of a pop and to identify the circle shape. And with these dot pens, you could determine the size of the dot that you want depending on how hard or how long you tap it down for on the paper. And so I'm just gonna go around the whole thing, trying to evenly space out the dots, but it's okay if it's not. And that just added a little bit more interest to it. 
and that's going to go up here and now let's put our title back on there and you see it just kind of added to that and made it really really stand out my next thing I want to do to this is I still want to use my custom cutting template and I want to create rings. I think the like having rings coming out, we haven't done this again in a long time. I guess I'm bringing back some old, <laughs> older ideas and I'm going to bring in three of these colors. This was the orchid, the blue orchard canary, and this is the island water. So those are very nice, soft colors. And I, I think that's going to, blend in very nicely. And what I'm gonna do with these, I'm gonna use my same template so that the sizes are very similar. I'm gonna use the inside track. I'm gonna come in with the blue blade first and then the green blade, and that will cut us out a ring. And I'm gonna do that on each color. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna save the inside of the circle in case we want to embellish with some of those in a little bit. So here's our rings, and then I'm just going to tuck them underneath my big circle. I think this is just gonna add that little bit of color and whimsy that we're gonna need for this layout. And it's gonna look something like this. Kind of old school, but yet super cute, right? Yep, don't forget about those rings. Bring out those rings <laughs> and use them on your layout if you haven't done that in a while. I think I wanna do something a little bit different. So I was inspired to do the dots around this from a metal die that I have that kind of stitches along the edge. And for this one, I have another die that kind of does circles and rings and it has these little dots around. So I thought it would be kind of cute to bring in our hole punch. Any size hole punch would work for this. And I'm going to just punch out a few of these in each color. So now what I'm gonna do is take the little dots that came out and I'm just going to randomly place them on the rings. So I'll get that all glued on there, but that's kind of the look I'm going for, just to add a small bit of interest to those rings already. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. What I think I wanna do is I'll probably scoot this whole thing up because what I want to do is bring in some banners hanging out the bottom. So I'll have to push all that up once I get all those <laughs> little dots glued on there. So I'm gonna create three different banners. I'll use um, these three colors as well as light blue and I'm gonna bring in some gingham as well. So I'm gonna cut one and a quarter inch strips by three inches and then I'll give it a little bit of a banner cut right here. And then I'll decorate each one differently. So let me go ahead and put you on fast forward and I'll get that done. Okay, there we go. I just made three banners. They're all the same size now, but when I go to adhere them, I will kind of stagger them to kind of look like this. Okay, so let me go ahead. Actually, I like how they're laying there. I'm gonna go ahead and put some adhesive. There we go, I'm gonna trim. And there we go. And then I'll slide all that up and I'm gonna hang it just under there. And there we go, there it is with everything adhered down. I haven't put the circle down yet, just because I wanna add a few more small embellishments here and then we will be done with this section. So the next thing I wanna do is I want to bring in the rubber duck punch. This will be a baby layout, so why not bring this in and get some more use out of it? And for this, I'm going to punch three ducks out. 
And the reason I want to do three is because I want to layer them together to give it a little bit of dimension. I'm actually going to turn the duck around so that he's facing on to the inside of my layout and then I'm just going to adhere them together. I could use some repositionable for this or some wet glue or something. I just line them up and then I just give it a good push down. There we go. So if you see, it just makes it a little bit thicker. So I don't have to use any foam tape or anything on here. I did add some foam behind my title so that it kind of pops up a little bit. And then I just want the duck to be somewhere around here. There we go. And then the last thing I want to do is on this area, I want to bring in my trimmer and change the blade to my scallop blade. I'm going to do a waist cut first, then I'm going to change my blade back to the straight blade. Here I am just sneaking in these little tools as we build our embellishment cluster, just adding a little bit of texture and something else for the eye to stop and look at. So I'm going to cut this about a half an inch, and then I'm going to use that piece to kind of create a subtitle. And for that, I'm going to look through my little word book. So I've shown this before. This is an old Tim Holtz um, little word. I call them little words <laughs> because they have like just tiny little words and you can string things together or you could, you know, use one word at a time. And I'm going to look through this and see what I can come up with. And what I came up with was two little stickers that say little one. <laughs> On this one it says little, on this one it says one, and when you put them together it'll say little one. I'm going to adhere it to this blue piece, trim it down, and then adhere it right up there. And here's what that looks like. You'll see I just pieced them together, lined them up right there, adhered them together. Put it right down toward the bottom, and one reason is so that it overhangs and kind of covers up my little banner edge right there. It's going to say amazing little one and it's going to have a little duck and so it's bringing my theme to life now. And I think I'll take this page, this piece with me to the other page. Okay, so what do we want to do with this page? I would like to put an embellishment cluster up here and then I'm going to need to put one down here especially to cover up that little white mark. So I'll start up here and we can build our cluster there and I'm still trying to decide where to put the arrow. I like the arrow, but we're, I'm still not certain how far over I want to put it. So I think how I'm going to begin this is a couple ways. Well, first I want to bring in this strip that we had left over from the other side. And I'm thinking I'm going to tuck it right under here just because I have it. I have it and I think it'll help to kind of bring this darker blue color in. So yep, that'll go right there and it's the same color as our arrow, so that's perfect. And then I wanna start with my cluster base, and I thought I have these circles here, so let's bring in one of those, and I like the blue, and our pen again. So we've used our pen now three times. We, we used it twice in the other cluster, and I'm just gonna go around the entire circle like I did before. There we go, pretty quick, and you'll see how it just pops that circle out and makes it a little bit more eye-catching. And I'm going to put that probably right here. I like to put clusters in these awkward corners that we have. So I think that would be a great place for that. We can even have our arrow coming out like this or even better yet, I think. Yeah, there we go. You know what? I found a home for the arrow. I like it like that. So the arrow now has actually become more of a cluster base. It brought in that direction and the cute little chevrons. That's going to be there. Now I want to bring in more critters. We used a duck on the other page. Now I would like to bring in my bumblebee. A nice yellow bumblebee would be nice. And then we'll take the bumblebee and place him right here on our circle. I also want to bring in this firework punch. This is a fun, whimsical punch. It can add a lot of texture and dimension to our pages. And for that, I'm going to bring some island waters. So I'm just really sticking to my color scheme so far that I've used in the other cluster on the other page. And I'm gonna do one in just white. And this is just gonna add some height too to my cluster here. 
and just have those coming out a little. Now they will lay flat onto the page because I will adhere them flat on there. And I think my little bee needs some eyes, maybe some eyes and a little smile. Oh, he kind of he kind of looks like he's up to no good. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's okay. Let's put him like back on there like that. And then I think the last thing I want to add is maybe another word sticker. So let's see. There's so many good ones on these little sticker sheets. And I mean, so many of them will fit. I kind of want a small one so it's not protruding too far off since I already have the arrow kind of going off to the side there. So like, for example, love is all you need. That's too big. I I'm, I'm guess I'm looking more at something like this where it says shine. So I'm going to mat this onto some baby blue cardstock just to add some more baby blue up into my cluster. So actually while I was away, <laughs> I actually liked this one that a little bit better. It says love you. So I went ahead and put that onto some blue uh, baby blue cardstock and then I'm going to put it off to the side like that and put the bee kind of just floating up like that. So that'll be that top cluster. I, th I like it. I think it's very fun and playful. So let's come on down here and you can, you're can you getting an idea now of the colors I'm using and I'm just using cardstock. Paper has so much going on already that I feel like the cardstock is, um, is the best choice for this layout, but I would do the same process using some uh, designer paper as well. So, okay, so down here, I just really wanna bring in some different tools and things that we have. So for my base this time, I'm gonna bring in the ticket, the admission tickets punch. And I just really want one ticket. So that gave me this one right here. And once we cut it out, I like keeping those perforations on the side. I think that looks fun. And I also think this one's going to be long. It's long, so I'm going to be able to cover up my little boo-boo right there. I think I'm going to bring back in my firework punch and our island water cardstock and do one more punch out and kind of put this like right here. Now I'm not going to go too far into the photo, but just, you know, keep mindful that I won't put any adhesive on this edge right here because it's touching the photo. That way a photo could be slid in nice and um, easily and it's just the adhesive will just be on the part that's resting on the ticket then let's bring back in the rubber duck again and i have a scrap here of the blue orchard that we've been using and let's see if we like it give and we could probably just do one one punch out and not give it the dimension like we did on the other page because we're already starting to get some height right there now one thing i've been doing and having some fun with this ticket punch is I bring in the postage stamp punch as well. And this is a fun little tip to try. So I bring in, I'm gonna bring in my designer paper and I'm going to punch, but I'm only gonna punch out the larger of the two sections that fall out. So I'm gonna turn it so I can look at it upside down and this should be, yeah, this is a perfect fit. So this is a one inch strip and I'm just gonna line it up in there Kind of give it a little squeeze to hold it in place and then turn it upside down. And then I'm going to take this. Now let me show you what it looks like on the ticket. This fits pretty good right in the center of the ticket. So a fun way to decorate your ticket using more punches that we already have. And so that's going to go like that. This will go on top and then the duck will come up like so. There we go. And I do want to bring in one more little punch for that area. And that's going to be the Shutter Love Punch. I love this one. This is great. You get two embellishments out of one punch because you'll get the camera and the heart. Actually, you'll get three because you'll get the little heart in the center there as well. I'm going to bring in some white because I have white in my other clusters. And I'm just going to punch it out. So you'll get the little heart too. And I probably won't use white, but I actually might punch that again and get a different color. And in fact, I'm probably not gonna use either of the hearts. So you can save these for other layouts. You can cut it out nicely there. And then I like to just snip out the camera. And then I'm gonna slide that right under there. And if you didn't wanna do this, you could do a little word phrase would be super cute there as well. 
Let me pause the video, clean up all this, and get these two sections adhered down, and I'll bring both pages back in, and we'll see if we wanna work on any finishing touches. Okay, hold on. So this is our two pages together, and before we get on to finishing touches, I would like to take this opportunity to ask you to, if you're enjoying this, or if you just love using your tools, can you please just click that like button? I really do appreciate it. I have fun using my tools. I hope you do too. And I haven't been counting. So um, let me know in the comments how many you think. I'll count at the end and um, we'll compare numbers in the comments. So thank you for clicking that like button and for commenting, commenting. I really do appreciate it. Before we move on to finishing touches though, there is something I have to address and that is my photo mat. So I'm gonna take these off because those, will, those are not gonna go with the layout. They won't be black. In fact, I have made some in the Blue Orchard. So I'll go ahead and put these down here. I think it obviously looks so much better with the blue than it did with the black. This one, like I said, I'm going to overlap slightly there. And then this one I could put at an angle if I want to. Here we go. So it can look something like that. But I have made another um, rogue decision here and I have decided that I need more placement for photos and you can't really even include peekaboo pockets on this because I've trimmed these down. So if you kept them a little bit bigger, then you certainly could use the peekaboo pockets. But since I went with smaller photos, I thought I better have somewhere else to put photos on. I decided that I'm going to bring in some circles. So I'm gonna cut a circle out for over here and I'm going to use the small circle in our, in our custom cutting system and I'm going to do a blue blade and then I'll put a white center to identify where the photo is going to go. And then I'm going to put one over here. I think this one's going to be too big. So I probably will bring in the largest circle and cut on the inside with the green and blue blade as well. So I'm going to do that and I'll put you on fast forward and we'll come back. Here's my circles. This one will accommodate a nice big photo. It's just getting it in a circle area. So for this one, I'm probably gonna bring it down over here somewhere. I have a lot of open area and you could always do another square. I just thought the circles would be fun because I have circles already on the layout. So one, this one's gonna come right about there. And then this one will come right about here and I think I would rather overlap the maybe the journaling box than I would the photos. So I might stagger those like that. I think that looks kind of cute. Put this one closer to the um, embellishment cluster. If I put it over here, I feel like I have a big gap here and I cannot move that because it's already adhered down. <laughs> so we're gonna just slide that like that. And then this one kind of gets out of the way from overlapping too much into both the journaling area and the photo so works out perfectly that way they can get a couple extra photos on here with just some slight cutting now for finishing touches so i'm going to bring in my blue tonal stickers because there's some hearts on here and i thought that would be super cute so what i'm going to do is take the darker one bring it right up here next to where we said love you just a little something to put up there and then i really like the heart idea and bringing in all this love to this page. So I'm going to bring back in my island waters and I just wanna punch out a little heart. Let's see if I can do that out of some scrap here. I'm just making sure it's in that little heart area. And then this little heart, I think I'm gonna bring right up here, but maybe, maybe right there. And maybe one more. and maybe put it right here on the shutter of the camera. And there we go. Well, that's a wrap on that layout. I love it. I think it's gonna, it's very cute and fun. Definitely a child or baby layout. So I hope that you enjoyed that. And until next time, everybody take care and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.